Hello friends, so I'll be covering this series of snippets. Uh, so this small snippet today as part of 2024 IDC, IDSA guideline is on treatment of KPC outside the context of UTI. So non-UTI KPC infections. So that's a section uh, which I'll be covering in this snippet. So KPC, the full form is Klebsiella pneumonia carbapenemesis. So for all the trainees, uh, understand because we keep using these words, NDMs, NBLs, KPC, it's Klebsiella pneumonia carbapenemesis. So for this, there is an AMBLAS classification, which I'll just give you a little brief on it uh, before we embark on what the guidelines say, because guidelines is pretty simple. So again, to reiterate, so this came in 2024, it's around 54 page document. I request all of you to go through once. So again, just to recapitulate the common CRE organisms, which we all should know um, at any point of time to have clarity, the Entrobacter, Cloake and Aerogenes, E. coli, Citrobacter, Klebsiella, Morganella, Pseudomonas and Serratia. So please remember these organisms. These are the typical because right now as I'm speaking, I have one patient in ICU with Serratia, which is a sort of a CRE organisms. They tend to produce carbapenemesis and they show resistance to multiple groups of antibiotics. So we'll talk about uh, the AMBLAS classification, which we need to have some conceptual understanding because the treatment that we calibrate is based on the enzymes that get detected on our PCR testing. Because nowadays, any antibiotic that we direct, we need to have the enzymatic classes of enzy enzymatic classes that they belong to or the genes coding for the enzymes they produce which confers resistance to them. So for that, we refer to this AMBLAS classification. So beta-lactamases is something we are all aware, restricted spectrum or extended. Or we say ordinary spectrum beta-lactamases, we call it as OSBLs, or ESBLs is extended spectrum beta-lactamase. And in ESBLs, there are class A and class D, serine ESBLs, which we classify as A and D, class A and class D. Then you have the third category, which is AMP-C producers. So AMP-C, and uh, this belongs to class C. So, so it belongs to class C uh, group of enzymes in AMBLAS classification. So it's easy to remember, just remember ADC, what, how the mnemonic is A and D comes in ESBL, and AMP-C is equal to C class, uh, or C class enzymes. And the fourth category is carbapenemases. Even in this, you, it, uh, you can divide into ADB, so serine and metallobeta-lactamases. Serine has A and D. It belongs to class A and class D are serine. Anything serine, it is A and D. Metallobeta-lactamases, in class A, it is KPC. So why I had to show this is, where does the KPC come in this enzymatic classification? So KPC belongs to class A of the serine part of carbapenemases, and OXA-48 belongs to class D. And MBLs is class B. So you have to remember ADB, ADC, A and D is ESPL, C is AMC, and class A and class D under carbapenemol, C is KPC and OXA48, and class B is metal of beta -lexanus. So this is one classification in some format you need to keep in mind because today we'll be talking about IDSA sort of a recommendation for KPC, which is, belongs to class A of the serine group of carbapenemases. So this so this whole carbapenemesis divided into serine and MBLs, and serine is divided into class A and class D. A is KPC, D is oxaphotate. So remember in some format, however you wish to remember this. So, and in class B, it is NDM, BIM, and IMP. So these are the sort of a genetic coding for the enzymes that they produce. So in IDSA, the question that was, the recommendations that came was for this, what are the preferred antibiotics for the treatment of infections outside the UTI by carbapenem resistant enterobacteria if KPC production is present. So KPC belongs to carbapenemase resistant enterobacteria and it belongs to A group of serine part of carbapenemase. So you have to remember that. So the choices is simple. It's the same choices as I have covered in the previous video. There are very limited choices in India it is only ceftazidim avibactam that is recommended for KPC-TRE. 
APC carbapenemase resistant enterobacteria. It is septazidim avibactam as a second choice because the more weightage is given to meropenem vaberbactam, which is unavailable in India. And imipenem, so imipenem relibactam uh, is sort of put as a third choice and cefidarocol is also there. So it means the choices in India are very limited. So the second choice is septazidim avibactam. And the first choice, the more weightage is given to meropenem vaberbactam, and imipenem is sort of gets a lesser sort of a grading. And ceftericol, which is unavailable in India, is also suggested as a choice for series. So the, why we have to add, uh, look into this with a little bit of a thought is uh, earlier where we used to commonly tend to put in colistin or polymixin sort of combinations is sort of overwhelmingly de-emphasized in this 2024 IDSA. And if you see the four classes of antibodies which tend to keep recurring in a very common way is septazidim abibactam and uh, meropenem vaberbactam, imipenem relibactam. So these are the four classes which keeps coming very often. So there is more de-emphasis on all this colistin based combination. And more than 95% of KPC CREs uh, are covered by these antibiotics. So these antibiotics are active against more than 95% of KPC CRE. So where does this evidence come from? So it comes from these uh, two studies. So this was a study, meropenem vaberbactam versus septazidim avibactam uh, for carbapenem resistant enterobacteria infections. So this study came from USA where they compared meropenem vaberbactam with septazidim avibactam. So they had 26 patients in meropenem vaberbactam and 105 in septazidine uh, because they gave more weightage to meropenem vaberbactam because the clinical response as you see was 85 percent for meropenem vaberbactam in septazidine avibactam it was 61 so numerically there was more sort of a response with meropenem vaberbactam as come that's why meropenem vaberbactam was given more weightage although they did not attain statistical significance in this study 30-day mortality also, if you see numerically, was lesser in meropenem vaberbactam as compared to septazidim avibactam. And recurrent infections with CRE occurred to a lesser degree than septazidim. But all these were statistically not significant. But since numerically there was signal towards better effect from meropenem vaberbactam, the choice one was meropenem vaberbactam followed by septazidim avibactam followed by imipenem relibactam. So this was the only choices given for KPC CRE. The limitation of this particular study was there was selection bias. And as you see, the number of patients included in the study were small. And half of these patients which were included had polymicrobial growth and had a, other additional antibodies. So these were some of the limitations of this particular study. And after this, there was another study from which these guidelines were formatted. This came in 2020 from the German group. This study was done in Germany and Brazil. Here they compared imipenem relibactam and with imipenem silastin with colistin. So they had 21 patients in relibactam and 10 patients in colistin. And when they looked at so only the response rate in CRE KPC in this particular, so there was 40% clinical response in relibactam. And actually the response was good with uh, imipenem and colistin combination. But again, here it was very small number. The CRE was five CREs they had in imipenem relibactam and two CREs in imipenem silastin, which means comparison could not attain any sort of a statistical uh, conclusions because it was a very small group of patients. So based on this, imipenem gets imipenem relibactam gets a little lower weightage as compared to meropenem vaberbactam and septazidim avibactam. So guidelines are predominantly based on these two studies for KPC CRE. And septerocol, just a little oversight on septerocol. So septerocol is a newer antibiotic unavailable in India. And obviously all of us are eagerly waiting for this because this seems to be positioned in most of the guidelines. It binds to iron. And with the help of iron transporter, it enters into the cell with the help of iron trans transporter. So that's why it's called siderophore sort of a it creates a siderophore and then enters the organism and causes the bacterial lysis and death of the bacteria. So this is the mechanism of action. 
and 95% like is to septicidy mavi bactam and meropram rubber bactam 95% of kpc are, are susceptible to cefidarocol but at this point of time there is no robust comparative effectiveness data of septicidy to be recommended as a first choice for kpc cre so the take home is if you have to adhere to idsa guidelines 2024 For KPC CRE, the first choice is meropenem vabor bactam followed by septicidy mavi bactam. So right now in India we have only septicidy mavi bactam. We have to stick to that, and there is no recommendation for colistin based combination uh, in this 2024 guidelines. So that's about it, folks. For KPC CRE, which belongs to class A of the serine group of carbapenemases. So thank you, friends. I request you all to submit your valuable work to Journal of Acute Care and visit my website to read it. Please click. Thank you. Thank you, Vinod.